Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Brake Buddy Select 3 Portable Braking System here on our 2018 Chevrolet Equinox. So a braking system is going to be one of the many components we need to successfully flat tow our vehicle. And the braking system is a pretty important part. A lot of people actually sort of overlook this, but in recent years this is actually a requirement for most vehicles over a certain weight in pretty much every state. Now our Equinox here, it's safe to say it's going to exceed the weight capacities in nearly every state, so it is going to be a requirement for this vehicle. Now what this actually does is, this is pretty much going to help take some strain off the motorhome's brakes. So normally if we didn't have a braking system, the motorhome is going to be responsible for stopping both the motorhome and the vehicle we have attached to behind it. With the braking system here, this is going to help utilize the brakes on the vehicle here to help stop our motorhome as well. So take a little bit of the strain off there so we can come to a much safer and effective stop. So in regards to supplemental braking system, there's gonna be two main types. We have the portable kind, which is what the Select 3 is, and we also have what's known as a permanent. Now the permanent systems are great, they work really well. However, they're gonna require a large setup or large installation for that first initial install. It's gonna require a lot of modifications to the vehicle in most cases and definitely going to take you a lot longer for that initial install. But the benefit of these is there's a little bit more convenience, not much, but usually for these you just get in, you hit a switch, and then the vehicle is in flat tow mode and you're ready to take off. Now a portable system isn't going to require nearly as many modifications. That initial setup time is going to be pretty much cut down to an hour or so, whereas the uh, permanent systems can really take you all day. So we're not going to have that huge initial setup. However, there is gonna be a little bit more setup each time we get into the vehicle, but with the Select 3 here, they make things very simple. You adjust the seat, you clamp around the brake pedal arm, you hit the start button, and you're pretty much ready to go. So it's really gonna only take you a couple minutes. In regards to just like an overall comparison and what I prefer, I really like the portable systems because I've installed many of the permanent ones and I know what it takes to get those on the vehicle and the amount of cutting, hacking, and splicing required to do so. As we said, they are a little bit easier, but I really hate doing this to the vehicle. There's a lot more, uh, lot more potential for errors there with the permanent systems and the portable systems. I like something that's very easy to transfer between vehicles and doesn't require all that hacking. So I really do like the portable systems and the Select 3 is an excellent option for that. So this is what the Brake Buddy actually looks like. As you can see here, you have this sort of boxy shape that sort of fits inside to the driver foot well, nice and easy. And the way this works is, there's actually gets pinned to the back of the seat there. There's gonna be an actuating system in here that's gonna press on the brake pedal physically when it receives a correct signal from the motorhome. And it's gonna pin itself from the back of the seat there, allowing you to apply the brakes in the vehicle here. Now, as you can see, there's really not much involved in regards to the end cab stuff. We have a cord here, which is gonna plug in to a connector we have mounted on the dash. We'll show you that a little bit more in detail later. But aside from that, there's gonna be sort of a claw or a latching mechanism that holds onto the brake pedal. But that's pretty much it. So we've got it installed now. We will show you how to do that, but why don't we go ahead and show you how to remove it first. It's very simple. We're simply gonna take one end of our connector here, pull it straight out. Now we can choose to leave this other connector into the unit or we can pull it out as well. It's really up to you. I'll go ahead and pull them both out now just to show you. And chances are we're going to have to move our seat back a little bit just to give us more room to work. And then I'm actually going to reach in there and I'm basically just going to be flipping a red lever. We'll show you that a little bit closer later, but it's a very easy sort of turn to unlock it. And once that's unlocked, we should be able to maneuver the claw off the brake arm. We have this nice convenient handle here to help us lift it in and out of the vehicle. And that's pretty much it. We could just get in our vehicle, take off down the road. This thing's very light, so it is easy to transport, get in and out the vehicle. It's certainly not anything you're gonna be straining your back. So as we mentioned, the unit overall is very light, and it's also rather compact because we can actually fold this handle down there if we just have it in the garage under something. You're just gonna simply pull open this lever here, and this is gonna fold down for a nice compact design. If you need to be even more compact, you can actually remove the brake claw too, just by removing that cotter pin there and pulling the pin out. So overall, it's a very compact unit. We could easily put this in the back of the vehicle when we're just heading into town or on a storage shelf in the garage when it's the off season. So overall, very lightweight and pretty compact as well for storage. So if we actually flip the brake buddy over, you're gonna see we have four little posts. I like to call them legs. 
So these are actually adjustable depending on the depth of the driver footwell in our vehicle. Basically, we want to adjust these so the brake pedal or the brake arm rather is pushing straight out, not in an angle one way or the other. For this particular vehicle here, I just went ahead and maxed them all the way out. It is a pretty deep uh, driver footwell there, so just simply extending them all the way. There's a little tool you can use to lock. They just rotate clockwise and counterclockwise, pull them out, lock them into place. It's very simple. But for this particular vehicle here, I just went ahead and used the max setting for each of our four legs, and it was pretty much dead level there with our brake pedal. So now let's show you guys how to set up the Select 3. It's very simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna release the lock here on the back, pull that up so we can pull open the handle there. And what you're gonna do first is you're gonna move your seat all the way back, as far back as we can get it. And then we're just gonna simply take the unit here, assuming that we already have the feet adjusted accordingly, and we're just gonna set it into position. So once we get the Select 3 inside the driver footwell here, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the claw and attach it around the brake pedal. So if it doesn't quite fit your brake pedal out of the box, you can make some adjustments. You're basically just spinning that top little thing there. It's going to be on an all thread. There's a carriage bolt there and you can spin it to increase the distance or decrease the distance between the claws. So you may need to do a little bit of fine tuning there to get a nice tight fit on your brake pedal. But then we'll just go ahead and move the lever over to this position here. And that's really going to squeeze the two together. And you can see we have a very tight fit now on that brake pedal. It's certainly not going anywhere. And that's going to pretty much finish everything up for the brake pedal attachment. Now we're going to come back, sort of center our unit as best we can here, make sure it's nice and level. And then we're going to move our seat up until it's about a quarter inch away from the back of the unit. We want to make sure that we're not putting too much pressure on the unit, depressing the brake pedal, so you do kind of want to keep an eye on that. But that's pretty good. Now we're going to take our coiled cable here, kind of like a four-way trailer connector if you guys are familiar with those. The gray end here is going to go to the plug on the side of the unit here. It's actually on the front rather. Closer look. You should only go in one way. It is kind of hard to see so you kind of have to bend down there and reach in there. And then we'll attach this other end to the controller plug that we have mounted inside the vehicle. Ours is going to be located right there. And that should power everything on. We should, see, we should hear the unit run here, just going through its initial setup there. We hit that auto start button. It should start depressing the brake pedal, and this is sort of like a self-checking mechanism. It's gonna make sure the pressure is correct. And then it should give us a little readout when it's done. I believe it does that about five times. So yeah, now it's gonna give us a light here that lets us know pretty much how that setup procedure went. It could give us an air message there, which would mean something was incorrect. Either we had too much pressure on the seat, the unit wasn't receiving power or such and such. But in this case, we have the green light next to the normal, so I know everything is working correctly. Now, once we've did that initial setup there and everything's good to go, we actually need to adjust the braking pressure here. So that's gonna be what this plus and minus sign are for. So once we get the all clear from the auto setup procedure, we want to go ahead and do a little bit more fine tuning to our particular system here for a particular vehicle and motorhome. Now we can do this with the plus or minus keys at the bottom here. This is going to be increasing pressure or decreasing pressure. There's actually a pretty good guide to you in the owner's manual for this system. It's going to let you know about what pressure range you should expect depending on what type of vehicle it is. I would consider this a smaller SUV. And the 45 PSI we have for this, that's a preset, is going to be pretty good for this one just to start out with. That said, we again may need to do some fine tuning. I definitely recommend getting out on the road with your motorhome and your vehicle and just sort of engage the brakes a couple of times to see how they feel. If you feel that you're dragging the vehicle along, then you may have too much pressure there. You may need to decrease some. Or if you feel like the vehicle is pushing the motorhome, you may need to increase the pressure there. So it really just depends on your particular setup there. The best way to get the correct PSI is to head out on the open road there. We really got, can't give you an exact PSI, just sort of a range to start. But all the fine tuning is going to be up to you guys, really, just so you can get the, break, the best braking for your particular setup. So that pretty much does it for inside the vehicle here. 
We do have to do a couple things under the hood, such as install the breakaway switch, as well as the battery charger. And we need to run power inside the vehicle for the portable braking system here. So let's go ahead and jump into that now so we can show you how it's done. So at the front of the vehicle here, ours is kind of tucked away, but we do have a breakaway switch. Now, as with any braking system, it's gonna be required to have a breakaway switch. So this system is no different. And what this basically does is, if for some reason we were able to lose connection to our vehicle here, somehow the tow bar failed along with the safety chains, sort of a last ditch effort is to apply the brakes in the vehicle here with the portable braking system. when we're not attached to anything, just as an extra measure of safety and security. And that's basically what this pin does. It's a pretty universal design, something that pretty much every braking system has. And this one is no different. This is where we have ours mounted. So if we take a look into the engine bay, I would like to point out another thing that comes with this kit here that I really like, and that's gonna be a battery charger. So this is what the particular device looks like. You could have yours mounted in a number of different ways. This is just where I chose to mount ours. So something unique about this braking system that not a lot of other ones have is that it comes with a battery charge line. Now, what a battery charge line does is, is while your vehicle is traveling down the road being pulled by your motorhome, it's gonna provide a charge to the vehicle's battery from the motorhome's battery. This is a requirement on certain vehicles, but if it's not a requirement, it's a good idea just to make sure that when you arrive at the campsite, you don't have to worry about your battery being dead. A lot of the times there's some parasitic draw on the vehicle while it's in tow mode. There could be some accessories that still have power and draining your battery. Therefore, it's just an extra peace of mind that we don't have a dead battery when we arrive at the campground and we wanna head in town and get a bite to eat. Just something we don't have to worry about. So we're inside the motor home here, just to show you off the controller. Now this particular kit here, it has a really nice, easy to use controller with some great built-in features that I really like. What this allows us to do is, it allows us to monitor the braking system so we really know what it's gonna be doing back there. We don't have to worry about dragging our vehicle behind our motor home if there's an issue with the braking system and us not being wise to it. This system here is gonna tell us about that so we can pull over and inspect the issue. And it's also gonna allow us to adjust the braking sensitivity. We talked earlier about really fine tuning your setup and this is gonna allow you to do this on the fly easily. So we'll go ahead and turn our controller on here. There is an on off switch to conserve the onboard battery. There's a double A battery that gets installed inside there. We also have a little plug on the side here that we can hook up direct power if our battery dies or we just prefer that direct connection. But nonetheless, go ahead and turn it on. Now we should be able to see our brake setting here and that's actually gonna match what's on the unit. We can also switch between the two modes, full and proportional. Proportional is what I prefer and recommend for you guys because that's really gonna allow the braking force to match between the motorhome and the vehicle as opposed to the full mode, which is just gonna apply full force to the brakes in the vehicle regardless of the motorhome. That's pretty much it for the controller. A couple other features here. We have the breakaway switch alarm that's gonna let us know if that pin gets pulled in the breakaway. It's gonna have an audible alert as well. And then we have a light that lets us know each time the brakes are applied in the vehicle. But aside from that, we don't need to necessarily look at this thing while we're driving down the road. Just keep it on the dash here, just sort of in our eyesight there in case anything did go off. That way we can just keep an eye on it. But aside from that, it's a pretty seamless system here. Nice, easy, portable mount. We can pretty much mount this wherever we want. There's a non-slip pad here on the bottom so you don't have to worry about this flying across your dash. But that's pretty much it for the controller. So the first part of our installation for the braking system is we're gonna grab our battery charger. So it's gonna be a harness along with this black box here. It's clearly labeled battery charger. And then we're gonna have two screws that come in your kit here that look like this. Now these aren't self-tapping screws there. They're just blunt cut screws. We're just gonna go ahead and pre-install them into the battery charger. Now we need to find a place into the engine bay to mount this. And a good location here is gonna be sort of in this back corner beside the shock tower there. You can see we have plenty of open space here. Now, because these aren't self-tapping screws, we went ahead and drilled two pilot holes into the metal here. So once we have those pilot holes, we'll just take our battery charger like that, and then we'll sort of line everything up with those holes we made. And then we'll take our screwdriver, and we'll snug those screws up. That way we can securely attach the charger. So there we go, now it's nice and secure, and now we can move on to our wiring connections. So the first wire we're gonna be hooking up is the black wire, and the black wire is gonna be attached to the positive battery terminal. 
So you do have a ring terminal pre-attached into that wire. So if you want to, you can just uh, sort of just tie up this extra wire and secure it to the vehicle here. But we don't need that much and we do have extra ring terminals. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and trim this wire. Just sort of map it out roughly how much I'm gonna need. And then I'm gonna trim the rest off. But again, you guys don't have to do this. If you don't have ring terminals laying around, then just simply tie up the wire and secure it to some existing wiring there. But if you do, it will make things a little bit cleaner of an install here if you just go ahead and cut your wire down and just install a new ring terminal. Now in order to get the nut off the positive battery terminal, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket. So you're going to get one of those ready as well. So get that ring terminal on there. And we're going to take our 10 millimeter socket. We're going to be removing that nut there. I'm going to go slow here when we get to the end because I do not want to lose that nut. We'll pull that off and then what we're going to do is we're just going to simply take our black wire. We're going to route this over here to the stud, re-secure the terminal, and then we will thread on our nut. There's a bit of Loctite on there so it is a little hard to get off and on. And then we'll just simply resecure that nut. And there we go. I'm going to take the extra black wire though, just zip tie it here to make sure it's nice and clean. So now that we have the black wire secure, we're going to be securing the white wire, which is our ground wire. And we're already pretty close to the battery, so I'm just going to attach it to the negative terminal, this post here. So again, if we have extra wire, we can just wrap it up. Or if you have extra ring terminals, you can trim the rest off for a little bit of a cleaner install. Totally up to you guys. But pretty much just going to repeat the same thing we did over on the other side there. I'll re-secure that and I'll again use a couple more zip ties to secure that white wire. So now we have one final wire left. It's going to be this red wire and this is going to be actually running to the front of our vehicle to where our trailer connector is located. So these next few steps here are really going to vary depending on where you actually have your trailer connector at. And in our particular application, we already have the bumper off because we were doing the base plate. So it's going to make things a little bit easier, but you guys can certainly do this with a bumper on. That being said, we're going to go ahead and run the wire now and then we'll show you how we have it routed. So we've got our red wire routed. What we did is we just came back and under this bracket here and then down underneath the headlight assembly there, there's going to be a large opening. We'll jump underneath and we'll show you that. So here's sort of that opening we were talking about directly below the headlight assembly, sort of next to the washer fluid reservoir. You can clearly see our red wire. And if you have any existing wiring that you run it along the way, just make sure you go ahead and use some zip ties there just to secure it so it's not dangling or getting caught in any moving components. Then we have it come down here, secured to our wired for the diodes, all the way over into our trailer connector. And now this step here may vary depending on the exact trailer connector you have, but most of them here are going to have a center pin there that you'll just simply stick the wire leads in. You want to make sure you don't have any strands fray off like it just did there. But just stick that into the center pin. And then just simply secure your screw. Again, this could differ for each one, but most of them are relatively the same. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the breakaway switch that comes in your kit, looks like this. We're gonna mount this onto the front of the vehicle. Now we have a couple different options for that. They, in the instructions, they provide a sort of dual attachment method. There's a Velcro patch here along with a bracket that wraps around the breakaway. And then it gets mounted to the underside of the bumper. Uh, we have our bumper off here. You can certainly do this with a bumper on, in which case I would recommend you use their hardware. But for our particular application, we have a base plate kit here with some built-in attachment tabs for the electrical connector that are actually going to work really good for this breakaway. So that's what we're going to use it for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the self-tapping hole here, or sorry, the pre-drilled hole in the bracket here for the breakaway switch. You're going to need to get your own hardware if you choose to do this installation. But we're just going to simply mount it to one of the pre-drilled holes here on this bracket and secure it with the hardware. So now we have our two wires coming from the breakaway switch and we're going to route these up into the engine bay of the vehicle, sort of near where our battery charger was installed. 
Therefore, we're pretty much just going to use the same path that we used for that red wire earlier. We're just going to follow it up into the opposite direction. So we went ahead and got our dash mounted controller already installed here in the vehicle. And this is what it looks like here. Now it's kind of hard to show you guys us actually installing this just because there's not a lot of space in here, especially with me working, but it's pretty simple. There's only a couple things we did. For starters, you're going to remove this little side trim panel here, this little threshold panel on the floor. It goes like so, and it just simply pulls straight out with these little clips. And then once you get that panel removed, you're going to go ahead and peel back the carpet here. And you can see I just have it pinned under the brake pedal there. So that's really the only thing we need to do to gain access. And then I just use two self-tapping screws, keep in mind those don't come in your kit, to attach the controller here to the dash. And then this wire here is going to be run into the engine bay actually. And how we got there is there's going to be a large grommet, we'll show you that in a second. But it's going to be located up on the firewall there, sort of up a little bit further. And it's a very large grommet, we just simply took a half inch drill bit. I went ahead and checked on the other side that I knew the drill bit wasn't going to puncture anything once we go through the grommet. And I just drilled out that hole in that grommet and then I stuck our wire through and fed it into the engine bay. But now we'll give you a closer look at that grommet and how the wire goes through there. So if we trace that wire from the back of the controller there, you can kind of see where it goes up and through the firewall. There's that very large grommet in there and we just simply just drilled a hole straight through that. And again, make sure you go on the other side just to check when your drill bit. We started with a very small drill bit and I left it through that grommet and I checked on the other side just to make sure when we enlarge it to the final size that we weren't going to damage anything. But once you get that hole drilled, just simply feed your wire through there and then it's actually pretty easy just to reach down in there from the engine bay and grab the other end of that and pull the rest of the slack through. So here's where your wire is going to come through in the engine bay. Now you may need to reach down in there. Luckily for us, ours kind of coiled up here so it's pretty easy to grab. But we're just going to follow this. I got a couple zip ties securing it to some existing lines and it's going to have four wires here. So they're gonna, the wires are going to be prepped for you, they're already soldered on the end, so you'll just simply attach your butt connectors. So how these wires attach is, it's pretty simple. Number one, we have a white wire here. So I went ahead and used a butt connector. Butt connectors are not included, you do need to source these yourself. And I just used a wire strand to come straight here to the negative battery terminal. There's going to be a nut there which we'll remove with a 10 millimeter socket. Just place a ring terminal on that wire once you crimp it on, re-secure that nut, and that takes care of the white ground wire. The next wire we have is going to be the power wire, which is a black wire on our controller. And this actually goes to the red wire. You're going to get a little section with a fuse holder there. It's a long red wire with a fuse holder already attached. We're going to attach that to the other end of this black wire here with a butt connector. And you can sort of trace this down all the way to here. And this is the fuse holder here, so it's pretty easy to identify. And this is just simply going to go to the positive battery terminal. So again, take a 10 millimeter socket, remove that nut place the ring terminal over the stud and re-secure the nut. That's pretty simple. Now we'll follow this back to our bundle of wires here. And now we have two wires left. We have a brown wire and a red wire. And we're going to connect these to the two breakaway wires that we routed up into the engine bay here earlier from the front of the vehicle. It doesn't matter which one you connect to which. I just kept it simple. I went red to red and then black to brown. That's going to be it for our wiring. And that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the Brake Buddy Select 3 portable braking system here on our 2018 Chevrolet Equinox.